dismantle and quickly they will listen. You know, sit back, relax, and uh, try to put out some fires, man, because everything's on fire. <laughs> Not really, but hey, we've been through yeah. worse, if you don't know, if you didn't catch the pre-show. Yeah, Jitsi's <laughs> being Jitsi, but you know what? We, we've dealt with so much over six years. We have a, a, Sw a Swiss Army knife of like, oh, we have workarounds. We can make it yes. happen. And we did, <laughs> Jill. Yes. Worst comes and, to worst, we just use hangouts. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there, there is that. And I guess Jordan and I have switched today. So um, that's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that, that's right. I, I, I am Jill Linux girl. <laughs> it is, man. That's exactly what happened. A, a, AKA big Linux grandma. Yeah, no, not the grandma. AKA young peasy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Jordan, what have you been up to <laughs> this last uh, week? Uh, writhing in pain for the most part. Uh, oh, <laughs> you missed, that's right. If you if you if yeah. you missed the beginning of uh, yesterday's uh, uh, proton Tuesdays, as I've been calling them. Yeah. He, um, I, uh, I messed up my uh, big toe. Uh, the toenail on there uh, popped off, and now I'm covered Ew. in bandages and covering it in, like, back teen and hopefully not having to worry about having my toe amputated later on. Oh, yeah. I was hearing about that yesterday, and I felt so sorry for you. That's so painful. I, and your I, back is I feel still hurting on too, top Jill. of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what, what's worse is like I was I was doing some exercises at the gym to uh, to combat the back pain, which I can't do now because I have a messed up toe. Oh no! Oh yeah. So that, 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 that's my life. How are you, Jill? How's it been since oh, Thursday? Oh, I'm yeah, I'm doing good. Um, on uh, Sunday, I picked up a Behringer limiter compressor from Guitar Center in Hollywood to use for my LGC podcasts. It's basically the Giggletron 9000, and I have it right here. And let's see. I'm showing it on camera right now. It's a big device, but it's actually a lot lighter than I thought. Most of my rack mount equipment is heavy. So this one was actually quite light. <laughs> but that will help out a lot and maybe my, make my giggles less intense. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a limiter and compressor is like a band-aid for self-control. Hey, over here, I've been playing around with a Fire HD 10 because that showed up and I needed a butter robot to switch this nonsense. And uh, it's all right. It's not bad for a $99 tablet, but stay tuned for a guide on rooting and putting this thing into submission, which I don't quite have it there yet. It threw a curveball at me uh oh. right before the show yeah just like you know that fire yeah. launcher that you got in it and disabled i'm like yeah it's back <laughs> like, okay so i'm gonna have fun digging through that nonsense but let's get right into it this week yes. with 1804 uh versus uh 2018 xps jill that's a laptop from dell yeah oh Dude. this is <laughs> yeah this is <laughs> yeah that was good. This is wonderful. Um, it is uh, so wonderful to see that the new XPS 13 with Ubuntu 18.04 is getting even better reviews than even the older 16.04 models that are so well loved. Um, this this article gives a you know raving review over the XPS 13, and you know as the writer says, Dell Project Sputnik has has not just achieved creating a model developer edition Linux laptop, but an awesome Linux laptop for everyone that we can all be proud of. So I was really, really impressed with all the, the, the specs and the quality of this laptop. It's really, really cool. And it, it's really going to help the adoption of Linux. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i mean the the, the 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 this is more for i i would say this sort of thing is either targeted at like the linux curious because i i would say most people yeah. when they get a new laptop or a new computer i i know i personally remove the old drive pop in a new one and then just do a clean install um but I'm, i mean like yeah if you if you want out of the box support and you don't want to pay the system 76 tax but you do want to pay the dell tax you can get yes. this it has some <laughs> decent specs uh ranging from four to 16 gigs of ram one uh, the mm -hmm. the best spec one and that comes in at about uh, 1600 dollars has a two terabyte uh nvme ssd which is really nice i had to i had yes. to go aftermarket for uh, the one on my lenovo um Mm -hmm. The big thing here, though, is that it doesn't have like a traditional USB port. And as I'm looking across, here we here 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 we are. 
something. Yeah. Wait, I, I can't show you this because I oh, have you a can't camera. Show. Never mind. Oh. Forget, forget, forget <laughs> about that. Just play, play yeah. a plain Jane non non uh, Type C USB port. It does not have one of those. Um, <laughs> I literally was just like, yeah. "Crap! Where where is one on my desk? I can show you this. No, I can't. Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It, and it, it, it's and missing that uh, USB port. Yeah, and it doesn't have on onboard Ethernet, which a lot of laptops don't these days. So you have to use a USB Ethernet adapter. A little pain in the butt, but well, speaking but, of the Ethernet helpful. adapters, man, uh, no Type <laughs> A's on this. This is one hundred percent USB Type C, all the thing. And I like how yeah. the article writer he kind of rolls right out of the gate and says, "Kubuntu eighteen oh four, which is perhaps the best mainstream version of Linux ever released." Yay. Isn't that right, Internet? That's right. Yes, Guaranteed. that's right. There's no argument okay. about that whatsoever anywhere. Uh, <laughs> good I'm, luck. I'm, I'm sorry. They, they misspelled Arch Linux. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, no, man. It's <laughs> Gentoo. No he does mention that the you know it's available in your standard 1080p joint or UHD. And he says, UHD, it looks pretty good. And he keeps calling it 4K, which, you know, I've, I've given up on this battle. But... Uh, says UHD is definitely more power hungry of an option, you know, plus it's going to run you about $200 more. does make a mention with the USB-C being everywhere, but it does come with a dongle if you want to plug in Ethernet or anything like that. And for the most part, everything seems to work out of the box. And, you know, for 1680 and 16 gigs of RAM, that's not a bad deal, right? No, no that's... On, 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 or go, go on. Oh, uh, no, that that's perfect. Again, that's mainstream prices. So uh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to I was going to say as someone who recently purchased a uh, like a Lenovo ThinkPad, m mind you, I'm paying I'm paying for the business. T I'm paying the business line tax. Right. But um, but e e even then, like um, the, the, uh, for at that price point, it has better specs than the T485. Mm. Um, mm. So that that. So it's it's definitely an attractive uh, buying option if you're looking for a Linux laptop for sure. Also, the form factor is really nice and thin. I've known I know a yes. couple of people who have um, last year's model of it, and it's actually like a really well constructed laptop. I, I really like it. the 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 web the webcam positioning is a little weird. But... Uh, oh yeah, yeah. we got to mention that <laughs> it it has nose yeah. cam. If you're unfamiliar, yeah. it, it's <laughs> down there and it shoots straight up your nose. No, it, 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 it's it's worse because I, I used to work with a guy who would conference in on that webcam. <laughs> and what you get is like, and he had like these really weird like spider leg fingers and they were like, they were taking up like half the frame. And so like while he's typing, I'm just like, oh, God, this, this is a, this is like yeah. some uh, lost in space type stuff, man. <laughs> that would be <laughs> one of my, oh, I couldn't handle it, man. I, I would definitely have in my go bag like little figurines. I'd be putting on a show down in front of the camera. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, no, sir, I didn't see you playing with your dolls again, sir. <laughs> oh, oh, that thing. Hey, check it out, Jill. We got a new version of KDN Live 8.12. Yes. Yeah, KDN Live 18.12 has been released with many bug fix fixes and some new news on the upcoming 1904 release. Yay. So I was really, really happy because they fixed a crash on the image sequence importer importer this is extremely important as this form of import is industry standard and i actually often use image sequences um, import of pngs and targas for higher quality instead of video file formats and in fact uh, that's what what um, i've used for a lot doing a lot of commercials and movie trailers and whatnot so it's very very important that that works <laughs> so that was really cool and i'm also looking forward to the 1904 release, which will include the ability to use parallel processing for render speed improvements. All awesome. Uh, just just completely wonderful. And, so so um, to, 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 to clarify, when they yeah. say parallel <laughs> processing, this isn't just like, well, we're, we've only been previously using one CPU of your quad core machine, or is it, is, is it more like it'll, it'll allow you to network other, other machines to speed up uh, render time? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, yeah, it's for render farming because um, I was reading an article before about that, how they're going to finally get around to uh, uh, putting that in the uh, code, render farm rendering. <laughs> mm. awesome. That'll be good. And <laughs> now just just get MLT working a little bit better so I don't have to use a hacky script in order to take advantage of 16 threads at one time. <laughs> then we yeah. can talk. Uh, another thing that they want to mention that a new developer has joined the team. Speaking of accelerating mm. things. Yes. To uh, help fix 
move it, which is the GPU effects, which is something that you don't really want to touch in KDN Live if you uh -huh. have anything open and unsaved because yeah. uh, there'll be dragons. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the teams also, which I was kind of, kind of worried about, not uh, terribly so, but they're brainstorming on a new interface. And it's like, yeah, well, redesign. It, it's good. Yeah. It's fine. Leave it alone. Um, yeah. There, there's it, not a, it doesn't look enough like in, or uh, like uh, what, what's the what's the equivalent Adobe product? I don't. I yeah, no Premiere. Premier. But it, Premier, it actually there, there are, it actually already looks a lot like Premiere right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, also to note in blog posts, um, they're looking for community contributions. They got a junior job list for uh, if you oh. want to get started hacking on uh, Caden Live. Um, That'd be nice. They have some stuff. They have some low-hanging fruit that you can start uh, picking off. And yeah. hey, maybe you can help them out with the uh, Windows build because they, they mentioned that hey, that's still uh -huh. a thing. And reading through the comments, apparently it is a thing, oh. and it's still not a very good thing. But yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. the thing. All right, Jill, why, hey. why are you excited about MIPS? I mean, I listen. Guess. I listen. think this is actually really cool. <laughs> okay, try this to try about... to sell me on it, but you know, out of, okay. out of the gate, I, I personally feel that Risk Five has okay. already stole that the, the thunder uh, and the lightning. Yeah, you you may be right, but MIPS goes open source, and this is actually you know really really huge. Um, they have an advantage though over over uh, risk five because they are already industry standard are already in most devices and have been around for years so the tooling they need to change to a new processor should be uh, uh pretty smooth um and it's really just nice to have a competitive open source system on chip alternative to risk five so that's really cool. And I was actually really amazed by this because this is, you know, just a few years ago, something like this would have never happened. <laughs> so um, the fact that we have another SOC going open source is really, really great for the industry. And it, it uh, puts a lot of good competition out there and it'll maybe make even risk five even better. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> I completely agree with you on that. I mean, everything needs competition mm -hmm. and the more the merrier 100%. When it comes to MIPS, you know, you bring I think Jordan even brought it up earlier. Yeah. You, your first thought is N64 because that was a great yes. system, you know, with a lot of help from SGI, which that was the last time we really saw MIPS in the wild outside of. Yeah. Well, thanks Broadcom because that's basically where you would see it MIPS. Switches. Um yeah. Outside of that, MIPS is practically a dead architecture right now, though. I mean, I yeah. to, you, you don't have a standard 64-bit arc for it, and the 64-bit architectures designed for MIPS right now are violently incompatible, uh, completely different implementations. And But we do have a gang of routers. Uh, like, even the Nighthawk I'm using right now has, like, the MediaTek MT7 621. Yeah. But, but now we have three, though. We have three open uh, yes. CPU designs between, you know, MIPS, RISC-V, and OpenSpark. Yeah. I mean, and it, it, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, solely on the, um, I'm on the side of John Masters when it comes to, um, we, we definitely need more competition in the CPU space, because mm -hmm. for the longest time, it was x86 or bust. And yes. x86 has a lot of legacy cruft attached to it. Um, I mean, not that, that's not to say that MIPS doesn't. MIPS has been around forever and as such has a lot of legacy stuff in there as well. At the very least, um, I, no one really adopts this. This will be, um, this will, this will A, drastically, drastically improve, um, like custom ROMs for routers. Cause you know, there are still a lot yeah. of MIPS CPUs in routers. And number two, projects like OpenRisk or OpenSpark could potentially salvage this for parts as well. Like, oh, hey, there's some cool instructions or there's a neat way of handling yeah. such and such. Um, so getting getting that information out in the wild so that people can use it is definitely a boon. But it really does, it, uh, Ven, I got to agree with you, it really does feel like, oh, oh, oh risk, risk 5 is getting some traction. We, 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 have a, we have a low power risk CPU too that you can use, right? Yeah. Well, I forget the yeah. name of the company that now owns the IP behind MIPS, but yeah, they kind of came uh, out. I think and a went, Wave, I think it is. Yeah, yeah Wave. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. said, hey, you can use MIPS now. It's completely open after you sign this contract that still has some dodgy stuff in it, but we don't really bring that up. Um, I think yeah. a lot of the hype we see behind Risk Five is it's a ground up implementation. It doesn't have any of the legacy stuff, and it is still missing a gang of features. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't know. I think the more the mayor. I don't see how this could hurt anything. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely. It's good. yeah, and this mm. you know, and this also is screaming to arm. Uh, it's time to go open. <laughs> so that would be really cool. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I, I don't think ARM's in any risk right now, just because nope. those CPUs are yeah. literally in everything from your microwave to right. your car. So and they're going to be in your desktop in five years, hundred yeah. percent. I'm excited, I'm excited oh, for definitely. that. Mm. We're going to see. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, do you know what I, really makes me excited? Talk about updating BIOS. Yes. Oh no, no. Woo. This is actually. I was really excited about. This. Richard Hughes has bought, brought us yet another important announcement about the LVFS, American Megatrends, the world's largest BIOS firmware vendor who supplies firmware and tools to customers such as Asus, Intel, and AMD, and many, many others, joins the Linux vendor firmware service. This is awesome. And this is huge, and it means LVFS support becomes a first-class citizen alongside Windows Update for the motherboard manufacturers. This is huge for the Linux community. And, you know, most of my, actually most of my motherboards have American Megatrends BIOS in them. It's always been one of my favorite BIOS. So, so I was really uh, excited uh, about this. I, I, I mean, yeah, like, when, when, when I saw the title, like, AMI, what the hell is that? And it's like, oh, American yeah. Megatrends, you might remember me from every single BIOS boot-up screen you've ever seen yes. in the history of ever. Yes. Um, but no, uh, it, it, it's good. This this is definitely, I think, uh, a AMI is definitely eyeing um, the enterprise space for this because, yes, on, honestly, there, there's yeah. not a lot of like good facilities for BIOS updates under Linux. L like uh, when I had to update the uh, BIOS on my uh, T4 uh, T485, mm -hmm. um, they they had the Windows installer. I I checked the Linda Linux uh, vendor firmware service just because I'm like, you know what? I wonder if this is supported. It's not. So instead, what I had to do was I had to download uh, their bootable CD-ROM, which, of course, this laptop doesn't come with a CD-ROM drive, so I have to DD it <laughs> yeah. off the flash drive, pop yes. it in, boot off it, and hope that everything works. And there, I mean, BIOS yeah. updates are always just a little dodgy. You're like, oh, man, I really hope like some bit didn't get flipped or something. But de definitely, definitely having like uh, BIOS updates be something like a yum update away is super handy. Oh, um, it's also, yeah. Um, and, and and considering the low level exploits that are being like found in UEFI and in even traditional BIOS, having something to plug those holes with minimal user inter intervention is a good thing. Period. Yeah, so true, Jordan. So true. <laughs> I'm glad to go, you know, adoption. I, I like standards where we're not dealing around going does this or does this not. And this reminds me of uh, a company that's like, you know what, we're, we're going to do whatever we want. We're not going to do this. Who am I talking mm -hmm. about? I'm talking about System 76. System 76. <laughs> which, 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 which is hilarious because the article specifically calls yeah. out a bunch of Clevo laptops, which are System 76 yeah. laptops. Yeah, so. and, and Jordan, Cle you Clevo don't understand. uses... Yeah. We do our bio special thing stuff reasons. Right. <laughs> we, 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 we have a separate open MIPS processor on our motherboards now. I don't know, oh, well, man. Uh, this will make it easier, though, for System76 because Clevo uses AMI, so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I, I don't know. You know, you know what? Maybe, maybe System76 will do the cranial rectal inversion. Maybe. Um, maybe. Um, they, they may just say, like, well, okay, if our upstream manufacturer is supporting this, then it makes no sense for us to not support it. But they could also be like, no, our project is better. Rah, rah, rah. Listen, man, the yeah. project is artisanal, handcrafted, single source, low carb, free range thing. Um, but <laughs> free, free, free range penguin sausage. That's yeah. what I'm talking yes. about. <laughs> at the end of the um, little blurb there, they say, also expect another large vendor announcement soon. Yes. So, Yay. Right on. <laughs> right on. Awesome. Let's talk about awesome. the death of G+. I mean, the, the accelerated... Oh, yeah. this is so sad. The accelerated demise of Google+. Plus. Yeah, Google+, Plus and Google+, Plus APIs will be deprecated earlier than expected from August 2019 to April 2019. Oh, Another bug was detected in November with the software update of Google+, Plus affecting a Google+, Plus API. It was fixed within a week, and no third-party compromise Google's data, nor is there any evidence that the app developers who had access to this data misused it in any way. But Google is still, you know, being cautious and just decided, yeah, we're going to we're going to cut the cord sooner and or cut the circles, as it were. 
<laughs> it's it, 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 it's it's the chain. Bad. Like each circle is the link in the chain. It's like that Fleetwood yeah. Mac song. Man, you think hardly yeah. anybody used Google Plus? Even less people use circles. I tried that and I was like, "This is yeah. stupid. I don't have this kind of." <laughs> I, I see. I was one of the people who used circles. I'm like, "This is great. I don't want these people to hear what I have to say. I just want to hear what they have to say." Yeah. And that, it, it, it was it was terrific for that. I, I, yeah. I, again, like Google Plus was Google Plus was always a like a thing for niche communities, and that just doesn't have this user base. But yeah, no, there there was a, there was a big old API bug. Um, you're able to get um, yeah. some information, names, uh, addresses, or yes. not uh, not addresses. It, it, it was it was a bunch of like low class personal information, but they couldn't get like credit card numbers or your nationality or stuff like that. Yeah, Still, I mean, it basically could steal your baby. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of sad, you know. Simply because there were a gang, and I, I have to say were at this point, a gang of small but very active communities on G+. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. <laughs> I, I don't know if a lot of people were sitting around waiting for an excuse not to use Google Plus anymore, but they did. They are like, what? That thing? Poof. I mean. Yeah. yeah no. Now everyone's moving to like MeWe or one of those other ones that are going to collapse in about six months. This is one of the run. issues. It, it, it seems yeah. like a lot of the people that I was following or were following me, I mean, I had like 4,500 people following on G+. Yeah, um, yeah. Was, they were like, I'm going here and I'm going here and they're all not going to one particular place. So it's going to be like, all right. Well, mm -hmm. that sucks. Mm -hmm. bye. Yeah. Bye, Felicia. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well, I'm kind of at the end of the day, man. I mean, I, I'm genuinely surprised. Uh, G plus lasted as long as it did. I thought Google yeah. was going to nerf it. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Linux never brings up a very valid point. Without Google Plus, Linux Gamecast would not exist. This is true. Yeah. how Ven and I met. Ex exactly. Yeah, the, um, and I'm going to miss that aspect. <laughs> our, our Linux Gamecast community is all over the G pluses and we're trying to get everyone to, to move to mast.linuxgamecast.com, but not, not as quite successfully. So, but, but we we're trying. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, discord seems to be the place to go. It has a bit of a pay to play, yeah. element, but, um, mm -hmm. you know. exactly. Or well, IRC. Well, yeah. Yes. Or IRC back yeah. to IRC as we all love. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's yes. definitely a thing. Oh, man. I mean, talk about stripping things from parts, man. They're going to be killing Hangouts, too. Yeah. That, yeah. That, 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 that's... That, that's, been, that's been in the weeds for a while. We haven't heard anything about yeah. that beyond we're Google saying, yeah, we're doing it. And that's good. Oh, I, they threw a date on it like last week or week before last. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, it's yeah. thing. Sad. <laughs> I, I guess we're going 100% to Discord now. I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm just <laughs> yes. waiting. Here, here's the thing. I'm just waiting until they kill Google Docs, and then it's like, okay, LGC is over. We can't, we can't coordinate with Google done. Docs. Oh. We, we just got to get Office <laughs> no. 356 or whatever the hell it is. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, speak, speak, speaking of Microsoft, speculate. Yes. Um, hey, it's everyone's favorite website that always oh. loads an unnecessary video. That's right. We're talking yes. about ZDNet. Um, <laughs> this comes from Stephen J. Vong Nichols, and he, he's, he's yes. a little theoretical piece, man. Uh, Microsoft Linux, Windows, could Microsoft release a desktop Linux? Yes, they could. And I would no longer bet they won't. Here's why. Followed by, you guessed it, the why. And mm -hmm. my first thought is, man, I can't wait. I, I don't want a distribution. No, no, no. What I want is I want a DX12 accelerated X server. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we, we've, we've, we've been saying this for a while like microsoft doing anything remotely open rem anything with direct x would throw like a huge monkey wrench in everything it would um yeah um yeah, but yeah no this the, uh this, this this article is about like oh well here's 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 a bunch of reasons why Microsoft might want to make a desktop Linux distribution. Uh, first off, Microsoft already made a Linux distribution. It's for virtual switches. No one no one <laughs> yes. talks about that anymore. Well, hey man, um, I mean to his credit, he brings that up in this article. It's like they've already made a server. Azure yep. OS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And 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 yeah. Um, I mean we we we've known for a while Microsoft wants to. Wants to get into the uh, into the uh, essentially Chromebook space. I don't I don't know what we're going to call it. It's 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 a it's really effectively like a thin client on steroids at this point. Um, but switching switching Edge to Chrome is like the first step because then it gives them compatibility with a lot of the Chrome apps. Um, 
Oh, as, as as we'll be talking about later, a lot of a lot of mm -hmm. web applications don't really run well unless you're uh, using them through Chrome for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, but even but yes. even then, if if they're if if they're gonna, if they're going to make a if they're going to make a sort of Chromebook analog, they're still going to need a kernel to boot it off of, and it doesn't make sense for them to not stick with using and the NT kernel or Minwin or whatever their minimal install minimal functionality OS is just for getting a browser running. Um, mm. yeah. yeah, Joe, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I had a uh, boy. So after reading this article, I had a horrible dream that we would be complaining about Microsoft's implementation of Linux with Windows, like we complain about Google's implementation of Linux with Chrome OS. <laughs> yeah, I was, I actually had a dream about that after I, I read this article. And, um, but it is true, Windows apps can be containerized on Linux, a lot like what Chrome OS is doing with native Linux apps. And Windows is already doing the reverse with Linux apps with their Windows subsystem for Linux. And, but my first, one of my first thoughts about this was that Microsoft, I think their first move is they're just going to open the NT kernel instead. I think that will probably be their first move. But we might, you know, eventually have a Microsoft Linux in the future it's a little creepy but but the nice thing about it is it, it would make us the biggest gaming platform in the world <laughs> so well, one of the things oh. i will oh, definitely oh. see to get you know <laughs> just this bit in as far as like open sourcing the nt kernel or any kernels like that mm -hmm. i don't think that's ever going to happen simply because microsoft is in a lot of uh, government facilities that are like no uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you're right we don't want that, that attack yeah. vector being thrown in our face man Stephen, the uh, writer of the article, I mean, he's correct in pointing out that 2017 was the year of the Linux desktop on Windows. This is true. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hundred percent behind that, and you know, you're right. We we could do the gaming thing, but I mean, having that pre-made compatibility layer, and I'm talking about Wine being there, could ease a transition if Microsoft was to go the route of, hey, we're going to be yeah. running on a Linux kernel in our own weird modified way, but hey, compatibility. However. Yeah. I really do believe that all of this is just straight up wishful thinking because I think any serious development going on right now at Redmond is to do what they say they're trying to do or in the process of is turn Windows into a service. It's something yes. that you buy on a monthly subscription mm -hmm. cycle because when you think about it, Microsoft, they got this thing right now. They're throwing a lot of R&D and a lot of work behind this thing called Project X Cloud. That's their mm -hmm. game streaming service. They want to get that nailed down. They want to get good at that. Because if you get yeah. good at that, if you get that nailed down, you know what, kids? <laughs> Delivering a desktop experience, that's child's play after that. Yeah. And as, as and, and Jill, as for your point of the gaming thing, honestly, I think if Microsoft would ever, in, in, in this moon future, uh, in this edge reality where like the laws of probability have gone awry, um, even if they did make a desktop Linux distribution, they would move all the, their gaming stuff over to Xbox because they would love to get all the PC yeah. gamers on that cycle to have to buy a new console every like two to three years. They would love yeah. that. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it definitely plays into the strategy of the Discless uh, game box. I mean, you're going to be spending yeah. all that. I mean, this is 10 years down the road, maybe seven. Yeah. But all right, let's talk about it. <laughs> That's the thing. So edgy. Oh, they are oh. a edgy, man. Former Edge intern says Google sabotaged the Microsoft browser. That's why they're going to Chrome. That's the thing. Yeah. To which my first thought is Microsoft did not need any help whatsoever sabotaging Edge. But they go to say, you know, things like the blank div tab, which was a thing with Edge because initially Edge is like, hey, man, we're really good on uh, with our video acceleration. We got better battery life under Windows. And Google just put in a blank tag and just crippled it. Then Google rolled out like, hey, man, look at our battery savings on mobile. It's so much great better with Chrome. And you know what? You know what? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. here's the thing. Uh, they, they mentioned, Jill, I think you brought it up to a better point, is that uh, they're, they're going to be able to update edge with the chromium back in yeah. why are they going to be able to do that so much easier oh uh because now that it's it's on chromium it'll be independent of the os so the developers can update it as often as they want and oh. it gives them a lot more freedom and it will make the browser much better <laughs> and and yeah youtube has never really played that great on internet Ex 
explorer or exploder, as I, I used to call it, or edge. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, just recently at work, I've experienced edge not playing YouTube videos. You had to turn off, use Adobe Flash Player and settings and clear browsing data. I mean, come on, Microsoft, really? It's, you know, 2018, almost 2019. And we're still dealing with, <laughs> with Adobe Flash <laughs> in today's day it'll, of it'll, HTML5. It'll, it'll never die. It'll never die. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and again, Edge, no, it, Microsoft Edge, every other browser has no problem with this. And as Ben says, you are sabotaging yourself. You know, you have only your, yourself and your lame browser to, to blame. <laughs> I'm not going to throw all the hate behind him because, you know, listen, man. All right. First off, right off, right off the bat, uh, it's like, dude, you, you tied Edge into Windows 10. Dumbasses. Who, who, yeah. who signed off on that? That that just boggled me to the point where I had to get up and walk around for a minute. Um, it's because it's Internet Explorer. Right. right. It's because it's Internet Explorer. Here's the thing. The, now, the, the intern 100% yeah. is saying, yeah, you know, uh, mean old Google, they're up to tricks. Now, do I think the Googs is up to dirty tricks? Absolutely. 100%. Not a doubt in my yes. mind. However, <laughs> yes. you know, right now Google has the market dominance that Microsoft held and abused in the 90s. So and, uh, they're, mm -hmm. they're going to abuse that power. They are. And yeah. they, they have and they will and they do it and it's often. But you know, I, I aspire to be a good person. That, that, that's one of my goals later on in life. But this is definitely one of those situations where I, where I can kind of just like look the other direction, smile a little bit, be like, yeah, it's, it's kind of, I'm down with this. Uh, yeah. wow, sorry, Microsoft. Um, see, the, the, and, and, here, and, here, and here's the thing, Ben, I 100% agree with you. Google is 100% doing dirty tricks because why wouldn't they? There is nothing uh, legally that's stopping them. You, you could make a moral argument and Google would laugh at it because morals don't exist in the corporate space. Um, mm -hmm. And th this, 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 this is, this is ultimately, um, this is ultimately symptomatic of what I've been talking about for years where like e everything has sort of recentered around Chromium and Chromium will now become the internet explorer six of our time yes. uh, or of, 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 of this, of this current time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and a hundred percent. I think what Google's doing is ultimately not healthy for the internet as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good for their market share. It's good for their shareholders. It's good for the technologists who work there. But overall, for like the health of computer science and the the internet as a whole, this is this is honestly a terrible thing. Um, but I mean, yeah. what what are we gonna do? I I I, so I advocately support or I I loudly support for Mozilla because I think what they're doing is admirable. And yes. yeah, uh, and and on, and honestly, th this this was this was this was bound to happen at some point, anyways. Microsoft eventually saying, "Well, we got we got to go back to our old roots of embrace, extend, extinguish." They they switched over they switched over to Chromium to sp implement a couple specific features that Chromium was not going to upstream, anyways. So we'll see what that ultimately materializes as in the future. Um, I I, I, I don't know. Let me ask you a why, question, why, Jordan. Why, sure. Mm -hmm. I, do, do you think this is an issue of them going through the embrace extend, but they no longer have the power to extinguish? And it's extinguish. Like, I don't think you thought your clever plan all the way through now, Microsoft. <laughs> like, uh, now you're I, stuck I, with I, it. I, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would agree with that, but at, at, at some point, like with uh, with Azure, with them contributing to the Linux kernel, this is more we've we've seen our defeat on the horizon. We're going to try and assimilate ourselves so that someday in the far distant future, well, we won't be the vil cartoon Captain Planet villains that everyone painted us the, as back then. Really, what I would say is like we we have some deep seated, ingrained, and in, what are you rightfully so hatred towards Microsoft? And I, I get that. That's the thing, you know, to the point of like if uh, novella sriracha novella was like walking on water all, all linux outlets would report you know novella can't swim i mean here here's the thing i walk i, I walked on water the other day it was it was just frozen hey <laughs> frozen water is the best water 
Beautiful people. Uh, if you yeah. like what we do, you want to <laughs> kick us a few quid. That's the thing. We got a support thing. It's the holidays. Make our dreams come true. You can be our own Santa Claus. Santa Claus is <laughs> real. You yeah, better run. Buy some merch. Han- 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 Hanukkah <laughs> Harry is. He broke into my house once. That is got to be really. <laughs> hey, we, we got patrons. We got Amazon affiliate links if you're doing that last minute Christmas shopping. Uh, we got a wish list, which I think is down to like two hard choices. Uh, we got the humbles. You're going to buy games, give them as gifts. We get a little cut of that. PayPal and the Bitcoins. But. We got some people we need to thank this week. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. Aldius is our newest executive producer. Yay. He's He's been a producer and now he bumped it up to executive producer. And he was so kind in, in spinning up a Counter-Strike Go Battle Royale service mm-hmm. server for us here at LGC. We've been using that a lot. And uh, that's been a lot of fun. So th- thank you so much, Aldius. throw some love to Alan as well. Alan's been helping. Yes. And trying to oh, yes. Our- uh, Definitely, Mr. Alert. Zone server running. Yes. Danger zone. Danger zone. Yeah, LDS and Mr. Alert have been making it happen. So that's yeah. really awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we also have Mike G to to thank. He sent us a, a new Vixia camcorder of business, of which we're going to get a lot, a lot of use of in studio. Hey, and Jordan is doing the same camera. thing. If I hold it at the camera, that. you can't see it. There it is. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah. We got ideas and plans for this. And, yes. Uh, hold, 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 hold the box at the camcorder that it came out of. I love that. That's going to be yeah. <laughs> that, That's uh, kind of brilliant. I um, also want to thank uh, Arthur and man. I, I, that's kind yes. of showed up out of nowhere. And I got to go one do it. Don't worry. We're, we're working on this. We have a, yes. a one terabyte <laughs> SSD. And really, I just wanted the box to prop something. I'm kidding, man. Uh, this is going to help us out quite a bit because we're going to be able to start recording, hopefully, in theory, theory. So this is never going to work out right to record the entirety of shows and have a high quality version of that to go up on YouTube instead of just what we can send out with a live stream. So, yeah, I, 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 awesome. I, I, I guess this would this would combo with the 2060 to get like the, the high quality, the high quality capture. Yeah. 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 20, 2080, you mean? No, yeah, I can't afford a 2080, dude. It's going to be bad enough buying the 2070. But yeah, this is all part of our master plan to be pretty and awesome and fancy. But thanks for so getting the merch. Uh, I know if you bought some shirts, uh, send, send me some pictures, yeah. man. I'll put your picture in the some internet in your cups. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If, if you want to, if you would like to model for Linux Gamecast, right? Please come back to my trailer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and come join us on Patreon if you want to get uh, access to our Discord. We got a live audio stream that, fortunately, we can't. We just hit that goal, but it's something we've been playing around with. We hit the 270 of 270. So if we stick with that Ooh. at the end of the month, we're going to get the uh, video and live audio so for this show. That's going to be neat. But come hang out in our Discord. Come say hi. Get early access. We get a couple of little things we'd like to give back to you for supporting us. It's our way of saying thanks. And... Mm-hmm. What we have up next is just a quick plug oh. for ourselves. Oh. <laughs> Looking at album cover art. <laughs> this is a thing, man. Uh, yeah. we're, 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 we're on the Spotify's. I don't know, oh. man. Uh, apparently, Spotify yeah. has uh, <laughs> lowered their standards to the point to where we're Yay. on. It. So I, I have a link somewhere for LWDW. I don't know. Do 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 we have the cool. entire back catalog up on Spotify? <laughs> well, unfortunately, awesome. it's just an RSS link. So uh, yeah, if if we go down, I, I I really don't think that we'll end up. Uh, mm-hmm. There we go. Using yeah. Spotify as uh, free cloud backups. No, well, they don't offer Aww. any backup. This uses our bandwidth, but there we are. Uh, this is so awesome, weekly. Ben. I was so happy you there. set that up. And. Uh, <laughs> That went through. Uh, okay, so Arthur and <laughs> sent something else, not the SSD. Okay, I got to find out who sent us the SSD. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, he 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 sent us a capture oh, of yeah. us, apparently. All right, neat. Uh, oh, okay, we right. got a lot of stuff coming in. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> no, no. Watch him actually order the capture device, and then they shipped you the SSD just as like some yeah. something mess up. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, my bad. Our theory, you should have owned it, but like, yeah, and I sent you an SSD too. Ah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. You, y'all should love me. <laughs> yeah. um, thank, thank you. Uh, I will find out who sent us the Evo then, because I, I, this was my bad. 
I just grabbed this because I ran over and picked everything up <laughs> yesterday. And I just, when we sit down to do it, uh, pulled it out. I apologize, mm. but I'll get to you next week. Remind me because yeah. I'll forget. Cool. Too. All right. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, mm. I give you a slice of pie. Yay. A slice this of floof. Is, <laughs> this is Project Floof. This is so cute. Everything everything else is getting data logged to the internet. So why not mm. hamsters too? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And no, this is gone too the, far, Jill. You, 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 you get the creepy Hamtaro silhouette there. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, well, the, this uh, lady was very ingenious and wanted to see um, how how far her hamster spins in its wheel. And uh, apparently hamsters can run very, very far. And I, and I can't remember exactly what the article said, but how they how she achieved this was with a pie um, was actually she bought some magnetic door sensors like the kind used in alarm systems. It, um, to use to detect each time the wheel makes a complete rotation. And the sensor is hooked up to the GPIO pins on a Raspi where it's read by a Python script. And after that, on the Raspberry Pi, um, using the MQTT Internet of Things software, the data is then uploaded every minute to a ThingSpeak channel that graphs the data for easy readability. So it's just it's such a well done project, and she even even built a little cute hamster wooden box for the Raspberry Pi and all the all the fiddly bits, so it would look cute next to the. Well, you to get the to have the brakes on those technical <laughs> terms, man. Fiddly bits. How, how's the average person supposed to be able to keep track of that? That's science, man. Um, yeah. Check it out. I, I kind of dig it, man. I mean, it's a bit messy looking. It, and you know, yeah. she's like, yo, uh, unfortunately, it got stuck a little bit, so it wasn't terribly accurate. But you don't do projects like this out of need, nay. You do them as a testament to mankind's arrogance. And I love the yeah. fact that you can just go out and do stuff like this. It makes me, it makes me genuinely happy. I, I love seeing something of like, that's overkill, and I wholly approve. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it, it's it's a testament to what sort of wacky crap people get up to when they have access to an open hardware platform, right? Right. Yes. Is, 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 is your dribble too fat? I mean, we, we got we got something for you, man. <laughs> um, yeah. No, and, but like, the, every time I see something like this, this this is the point of the Raspberry Pi project. This is to put exactly. easily accessible hardware that people can program and create in people's hands so that they can go in go <laughs> in, enrich their lives with hamster step counters and creepy <laughs> jack-in-the-boxes that like throw knives at you every time you walk into a room or mm -hmm. yeah oh <laughs> hey jill do, do you think foofball was is cute yes i do i like harold the hamster that's its name is harold i had a hamster for five years growing up it lived longer than most in fact it almost beat the <laughs> get us book a world record it so, lived so long. You I, 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 I thought you were gonna say it lived longer <laughs> than me because i'm a ghost <laughs> well i'm glad everyone thinks uh floof balls cute because it died <laughs> oh lcc cares um lcc cares also, it, it look it looks delicious when it was still alive <laughs> It's the, oh. hey, maybe you have a delicious hamster or a um, pie project made of living hamsters. I don't know, man. Something with a hamster in it. If you do, or 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 like a pickle Rick suit made out of hamsters. Pickle hamster, man. And a raspberry pie. Tell us about it on our contact page. We got a thing, man. You don't even have to prove you're smarter than a butt. We got that Captcha V3 sauce <laughs> up in this, and uh, yeah, select the right thing. I mean, you can throw us a comment on YouTube or something like that. This is a good way, guaranteed. To get a hold to us and tell us what we're doing wrong or like really wrong or just like mm. stop doing this. I'm terrified. <laughs> and stop, uh, stop. He's already dead. <laughs> it's a, it's good because that means all of us are gonna see it and we'll be able to get back to you no matter what it is. And uh Mike, Mike threw us a little comment, mm -hmm. Jill. What's this about? Yeah, yeah. So so <laughs> Boogaloo, it's titled. Uh Great show, says Mike. Teespring says my LGC shirt is on the way. Exclamation point. Bonus points for incorporating electric boogaloo into the patter. Mike G. And yes, thank you, Mike G. Uh, we saw your, your picture in Discord chat of you wearing the one chair shirt. Awesome. Yay. So he was one of the first after me to get his merch. <laughs> Jordan, and, and, I told and, you and, and six his, years his ago when we first like, started weird. this, we'd be able to 
like get people to buy t-shirts and chairs on. And Jordan's like, uh-huh, no Mark. way. <laughs> I I, I I still advocate for a Hell Elks t shirt. Uh, t-shirt. Yes, yes. Uh, but I, I mean, I, th I think we can all agree that Breaking Two is far superior to the original Breaking. Which, <laughs> neither of which none of you have watched. So moving on. That's the, yeah. I'm next. Ah, uh, Chibs. Oh man, it's like disembodied voice. Aww. Okay, Ben. I realize you like to show all the goodies people have. Help with. Hang on. Goodies? Mm -hmm. Goody, goodies, goodies, yeah. Goodies, okay. people. Look at look at all the goodies. Um, yeah. Right. So many, so many goodies. <laughs> uh, talking head show. Yet your camera spot has been an ever shrinking forehead. Well, that'd be nice. I have a massive forehead. Um, <laughs> and a growing mass of blackness made of equipment and pop filter. Uh, for many months now. Lately, Nick's left breast. I mean, I mean, seen more screen time than your face. <laughs> than, than your face. That, that's funny, Chip. Do you, hear that? Do you hear that, Nick? You're right, Chips, because Nick's the star of the show. I don't know, man. Um, what, what, what do you think, I, I, Jill? I mean, do, do you don't, like? No. I know Jill. You see, you got to check Jill out on Friday. She tries to do her perpetual darkness <laughs> show. She's like, Pfft. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, then, um, as he said in our notes, he has a photophobia. So he, he, I, I am he scared has, of light bulbs. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't like <laughs> light too much. He's our vampire who likes eating hamsters. <laughs> No, I'll throw it to you 100 percent that uh, what we gotta throw down is that's like legitimately a thing simply because uh, I mean if you're looking for the, like the IDC diagnostic code that's 853143 if you're curious it's not a self-diagnosis this is something growing up that my mom was so, like so, yo uh, it was a thing yeah. that she had to do so, so you're, you're, god damn it you're, you're telling me you're not Saul's brother that makes no sense <laughs> From Better Call Saul, he is—he is the fear of electricity. And and power? Yes, yes. I, I'm yes. not—I'm not afraid of power, dude. <laughs> I don't know. You should be. All right. You should be. Anyway, yeah. What we're working so, with is fighting against light, and yeah. hey, man, we might be able to hook that new camera up eventually and get yeah. something a little more pretty. But you notice how I don't bust anybody's balls for video? <laughs> it's because we're an audio podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so so yes, says we I, are. the floating picture. <laughs> no. See, yes. look at Jordan. <laughs> you, you, you know when you know you know when your parents say you shouldn't keep making a face like that because it'll get stuck. Yeah. That's what happened. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll have fun with it. Um, but thanks, James. You know we love you. All right. Yes. Uh, we got to bounce out of here. And wait, wait. Do I have enough audio channels left? I'm in a really weird configuration right now. <laughs> yes, so. you are. Let's mm -hmm. see if we can pull this off. Okay. Maybe it'll work. See, Jordan's nope. picture is taunting me. Why is it taunting you? He's my friend. I love Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Venstone. Thank you, I guess, myself. And, and thank you to Jordan Swing <laughs> and Chatwell Dynamic. Yeah. You, you, I'm, I'm, I'm your friend. You can't even pronounce my last name right. What the hell is this? No, I'm sorry. Oh my God. The C comes before the Lang, Jill. I know, Swing. I'm so sorry. I apologize. It's never happened before. That's because you're mocking me. I'm, 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 I'm not. You can't pronounce my last name right. I pronounced your name wrong. I'm sorry, Jordan Swain. Listen, I always, I always pronounce Mr. Veen Spawny's name correctly. 